Or hey, Jamie and Steve, welcome to 2021. What's going on today? Hey, Scott. Thanks a bunch. Steve, what is shaking over there, my man? Uh, not much. Uh, Happy New Year. Yes, Happy New Year to you and everybody in attendance. I hope everybody had a, a nice, relaxing holiday season. So welcome back. As Scott was saying earlier, this is the first office hours of 2021. And boy, what an interesting day it was in the markets. Don't know if it was, if it was exactly what everybody was expecting, but uh, interesting nonetheless. So welcome everyone. And before we get started here, just a quick moment to get the disclaimer out of the way. Let the lawyers sleep a little bit better. Um, just wanna make everybody in attendance aware of the fact that the information that we share with you in this webinar or any of the other webinars that we have coming at you on a weekly basis is for educational purposes only. So in essence, if you need investment advice, please seek out a registered investment advisor or some other licensed individual like a Series 7 stockbroker, something along those lines, in just someone who's legally licensed to dispense investment information to you, what to buy, when to sell it, all that good stuff, because we are traders that have been developing this program since 2003 and we're just here to show you guys some cool trading related content and it's for educational purposes only all right moving right along uh probably got a nice percentage of new users uh due to all of the fabulous holiday sales that we've had recently um so just like to take a little bit of time here at the top of the hour to let you know about the uh, uh community that we've built around the award-winning tech that is TI Pro. We've got Barry's Trading Room right up here in the upper left-hand corner. Um, well, I could say it's the TI Trading Room, but Barry is the moderator uh, in the room, and it is a great resource. You don't even have to be a subscriber to get in there and enjoy it, see what it's all about. Uh, but the best thing about it, right under Barry, is the price of free. Um, so all walks of traders in there from the beginner to the intermediate to the expert so it's a great resource so if you have not been taking advantage of the trading room by all means get in there generate you a login and join the party um, of course on mondays you get myself and steve uh, with office hours steve's going to take the steering wheel for the trade of the week webinar on tuesdays wednesday good old hump day comes around we got our ceo and founder dan merkin along with our chief technical officer brad williams hosting Wednesdays, uh, always giving you a good peek at hopefully some new functionality that might be in the developmental pipeline about to get released. Uh, on Thursdays, Andy's going to take the steering wheel. I'll ride shotgun with him for the trading studio. And of course, every Monday through Friday between 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. Eastern, we have our daily live support session. We allocate an hour for that each and every day. You can go in there and get live help uh, from a trainer slash trader individual and you know it's all in real time so it's a great place to get your questions answered uh, regarding anything TI related all right moving right along here here is where you can get to the daily support session just in the bottom left hand corner of the screen there trade-ideas.com backslash live that is a static URL so it's at the same place each and every day um, all you have to do is bookmark that URL and you're good to go in addition to that, uh, we've got a vast amount of educational resources, uh, not only on our website, but on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, especially if you are new, we've got the TI University series, beginners 101, 201, 301 for intermediate and advanced 401. This is a four part video series and you can find it on our YouTube channel. Um, especially if you're new, this will help you get over the learning curve a lot quicker than not viewing this material. Um, so TI University, a great place to get started. Alrighty, and also like to show everybody how our user base has been expanding. Um, of course, AI was introduced in 2016. Seems like just yesterday, but see, 16, 17, 18, 19, it's already been online five years, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to begin our sixth year of providing AI content to you guys, and it just keeps on getting better. Hey, I was a little uh, a little shy today, and we'll talk about that, but uh, not that surprising considering the market action. And as you can see, trade ideas accounts in two, 2020 at all-time highs, and probably we'll see a higher bar 
uh, in 2021 as well with some exciting things coming down the pipeline. More importantly, like Brokerage Plus being available in the E-Trade and Ameritrade $0 commission environments, which hopefully, knock on wood, cross your fingers, all that good stuff, will be available by the end of Q1 this year, hopefully sooner, uh, hopefully the end of Q1 at the latest, but we'll just have to wait and see. As the coders tell us, it'll be ready when it's ready. All right. So here we are with today's agenda. I got some interesting stuff for you guys. Going to be focusing on stuff that's already resident in the product um, for everyone, you know, at, for everyone's access. Um, focusing on some windows today and uh, using a technique that's fairly simple. But before we get into that material, uh, I'm going to pass it off to Steve real quick here because it's that point in the presentation where Steve usually just kind of points out uh, overall market action, where we've been, where we might be going, all that good stuff. So Steve, if you're ready, I'll kick it on over to you. Yes, sir. Make sure there, I'm not on mute. There you go. Get rid of those ponies and unicorns. Not on mute, correct? All right, very good. All right, so welcome to my desktop. Happy New Year over here. As usual, we'll start with the S&P. Now, I have an interesting thought I was discussing with Jamie before we came in, and that is the psychology of the herd. Imagine having a great year last year, you know, and um, you, you made some, some pretty good gains. Maybe you were fortunate enough to get a pretty good chunk of this, you know, just some of it, not all of it, but good good gains nonetheless. But then the end of the year comes, you're like, well, man, I really don't want to report that nice gain to the government. I think you all know where we're going here. And, you know, so the first of the year comes along and that faction of the herd that was just itching to take some profits and build the new deck and buy the boat, put the down payment on the lake house, whatever, they wanted to take profits in the new year and defer those capital gains taxes for another 365 days, hopefully. So I think that was maybe the onset of the beginning of 2021 here. We can see the market opened up with a bit of a gap and just never really looked back. It did regain itself, and what I noticed is that it did regain itself here in this 15 minute for the most part. That's kind of a successful win. So maybe what we just saw was all those people that I was mentioning just itching to get out and raise some cash for whatever they need in their life, tuition for college, who knows? So with that being said, the candle structure was a nice close. We have that tail bottom, and we, for the most part, tried to hold on to the 20, gave away a Gave, gave it away a little bit, but not by much. Uh, so the 10 and the 20 were kind of held for the most part here. Actually, the 10 was lost. It doesn't matter. What I'm going to pose to you on the flip side of all of that possible good close stuff is that when we look at the body of the candle, we see what we call an engulfing pattern, uh, an outside candle, whatever you want. This one happens to be called uh, a dark cloud engulfing where it's dark cloud because the red candle is eating the green candle and uh, did so on much higher volume. Um, we'll see what that portends. Let me just, if I may, show you the last time this happened was back here, all right? Granted, it took a couple of days to kind of work that out. So, you know, a very smaller version back here of what we had today, it's a very significant engulfing candle. Um, so the question remains was, was that just uh, beginning of the new year, tax loss preparation selling uh, to defer taxes? Or was this the beginning of something? I don't know. Um, didn't really give us a cue either way. So we'll see what tomorrow brings, but I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of residual weakness coming off of what we saw today. Looking over at the NASDAQ, even more significant with the narrow range on Friday, pretty significant engulfing dark cloud cover candle there. And as far as the wick goes, a nice recovery, stick save, and above the 20 day moving average. So, you know, in the big, bigger picture, doesn't really mean a whole lot. I get it. It's just one day, but it's a new day of a new year. Uh, a lot of selling for whatever reasons. We'll see if there's any residual. I kind of feel like there's going to be a little residual selling. I don't know why. It just feels like that's going to be that way. Like it's not going to be that easy uh, to shake everybody out on the first of the year, but the, the bull market remains intact. And uh, for the most part, it was a decent, decent close. Could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot worse, meaning, you know, full red bar candle down in here into no man's land. And then we started talking about this real quick down here. So we didn't get that. We got the stick save. We'll see what tomorrow brings. But personally, my gut feeling is we have a little bit more residual selling probably 
we'll see what happens. Um, lastly, you know, in the trade of the week, which did not fire, I'll talk about that tomorrow. Did you want to say something? Oh, no, that was just me clicking my yeah. buttons over here. Uh, Sorry. UAVS was a really highly speculative play, and it didn't do what we wanted it to do, which was convincingly take some momentum out on the new year, bounce off that moving average and say, yeah, I'm going higher. Didn't even look close to as a matter of fact, uh, as I understand it, shortly after the open, they dropped some sort of offering. So this thing's probably off the table and I'm fine with that because my point is, we never really know what's gonna come into play on the first of the year. There's tremendous rotation from fund managers, the big guys, all right? They've been doing one sort of model all year, but in, you know, fourth quarter, there are guys that here's what we need to do on day one for the new year and we're gonna adjust our model. And all that stuff comes into play today. Um, you never really know what sector is going to have uh, a nice movement because normally we get that on the trade of the week, which is what I'm talking about here. I didn't have a good smooth transition from, hey, that sector went out really good last week. It's looking like it might have some continuation this week. No, all bets are off. And with that said, all that really did well today was the junior gold miners and the gold miners themselves. So um, I am participating in some of those, but uh, that is the first card, first hand that 2021 is showing us in terms of sector interest. And that's really all I got. Excellent uh, stuff as always, Steve. Thank you very right. much. I'll check You're back on the uh, questions here. I'll put myself on mute and try and monitor the questions. We have a big crowd today. Yeah, I was pretty caught up there. I saw George just pop into the question there. Wasn't it disqualified defense contracts? I guess he's talking about the, the trade of the week there. No, um, it didn't have anything to do with defense contracts. I don't think so. I'll have to go back and look, but I saw that they were offering um, some sort of a secondary to raise capital, which was never good. That is true. Always a little draw down there when the more money is raised. Okay, hopefully everybody's got eyes back on my screen here. Um, so thank you for that recap, Steve. Um, you know, the funny part about today, well, I can't say funny, kind of, darkly comical was we had a small gap up right um but then no no follow through whatsoever and just you know some really aggressive selling let's count them up here one two three four one two three four but the two hours and 45 minutes of the open was just nothing but selling now of course nobody knew what was going to happen today as it was unfolding but i gotta say the cc or my compare count window today was a pretty good tell. So everybody keep in mind, we're looking at 15 minute candles here. So this is the first 15 minute candle right here. And what I typically like to do is take a peek at my compare count uh, window. that's looking at the larger cap stocks. And when I say larger cap stocks, I'm talking any company uh, that's got a market cap of 4 billion or more. And then we're just simply keeping track of those companies hitting highs and lows uh, in the opening 15 minutes with a little bit of accelerated one minute volume. Um, so typically I don't really pay much credence to the bias one way or the other, unless we're at 55% or well over it, okay? Once you get up, you know, if you're kind of teetering around between 50 and 55%, a lot of the times we don't get uh, any solid moves, but today, as we can see, these were the readings after the first 15 minutes today, 61% selling versus 39% buying. And that was a good tell, ladies and gentlemen, because boom, you can see market action uh, after that point in time. So gotta, gotta give it to the compare count today. It was, a, it was an accurate read. It was a nice uh, tell. Um, doesn't mean that I just went wholeheartedly short, short, short. I mean, from what I saw today, wasn't easy on the short side, never is. It seemed like everything was going down just a little bit. That's why we saw the big uh, indexes going down, you know, like they did. Um, of course, just like any day, there are things getting throttled down big percentages as well as things going up. Uh, but as far as an opening tell in the first 15 minutes to kind of get our bearings, uh, you know, it, it's like the wind, right? Uh, the wind was definitely blowing south today and it was blowing pretty strong, okay? Um, so if anybody is wondering what in the world I'm talking about as far as a compare count window goes, you can always spawn a new one by hitting new on your TI uh, toolbar there and spawning a new compare count window here. And then you can just set up the, uh, the green strategies and the red strategies respectively. And that window is just gonna do its job, which is 
keep count of things coming through the green data side and the red data side. All right, moving right along here. CC expectations done. Now we're going to move on to the Holly recap, which isn't going to last very long today because Holly was a little bit timid today. As we can see from the AI trades water, we only had two signals today. One from a strategy called bear trap, one from a strategy called bull trap. Uh, in conservative mode, we did have a stop out in this short right here. Let me just get rid of that stuff. There we go. Um, a short in DXC. And let's just take a look at that one on the 15 minute because even though it was a stop out that the AI had in conservative mode, look what happened right up here around the stop area. As soon as we encroached that little level right there, we took a leg up, came back down, went back through the stop area. So many times when we see the AI getting stopped out of something, there can be potential there for what we call a trade around. And Steve and I always talk about back in the olden times, which is the mid 90s when we all started trading for the first time in the SOS era, there would always be another person and by the way, we actually had to go to offices back then because the web wasn't quite what it is today. Didn't have the bandwidth needed to trade. So we had to go to offices and they were equipped with T1 lines and all that good stuff, which was high tech back in the day. But the bottom line is this, there was always somebody in the office that wasn't such a good trader that might be over there complaining and moaning about maybe about to get stopped out of a stock or complaining that they just got stopped out. Our ears would always perk up and we'd be like, Oh, well, they just got stopped out. Well, now it looks good, right? And sometimes we take that trade uh, after they get stopped out and we were able to profit from their misfortune, right? Well, you can do the same thing with the AI. Uh, this is a classic example right here of a trade round. AI gets stopped out, but notice what the stock does around the stop area. It doesn't get too far above it before it backs off and it kind of hovers around for about 30 minutes. And then basically the stop area acts as a pivot point. So in other words, sometimes when we see the AI getting stopped out, that's opportunity for us because number one, if we short it going back through the stop area, we're getting a much better price than the AI did. And all we have to do is have it go back to the original signal line for a rather good gain. And in the case of this one, not only did it retrace back to the signal line, but we got to move down further I think that candle right there kind of bottomed out around at 25.56, okay? Um, so this is a good example of a trade around because you know, if this thing would have kept going and never revisited the stop area, we would have just disregarded it, okay? But if it acts as a pivot point and then we get a close below it or right at it, a lot of the times, uh, stealing another line from Steve here, it's the second mouse gets the cheese, all right? First mouse, no cheese, stop out. Second mouse hits the trade, he gets the cheese, he gets the profits, and in this uh, DXC trade, that was a perfect example of it. Okay, the only other trade today was the long trade that we see in ERY today. Now, what I noticed in ERY, notice what we have right here. It's an energy bear, 2x shares is an ETF. Okay, sometimes the AI uh, does signal an ETF as opposed to just a traditional equity. Um, volume in ET or excuse me, volume in ERY today, not huge. Only finished at 0.65. A lot of the times, typically it's the uh, Neo AI module uh, where everything has extreme volume. But these were both from Holly 2.0 today, which doesn't require excessive volume. Uh, but nonetheless, it was a decent little trade here. Let me get my pointer back here. Here we are looking at the 15 minute. Let us just go a little smaller here. All right, we see basically the same type of formation here. Tell you what, just for easy reference, I'm gonna go back to the 15 minute because it's still identifiable. And what I'm talking about right here is right here at the entry signal of 33.98. We got a bounce with a wick off the bottom. Sometimes that can give us a little bit of confidence. Sellers tried to take control of this stock. 
uh, they weren't having it. Buyers took control back, putting in a nice wick down here, which many times can be considered bullish. But if we notice what might happen once the signal was made, and I'm just going to put a little dot here for easy reference. This is the AI signal right here. And what might happen after that AI signal? So number one, we've got statistical probability on our side because the AI is bringing us this signal. And then my eyes immediately go to this line right here. Notice the little upside down wick there that we had. Uh, that was the initial high. Go down here, put in the initial low. And then as we're grinding back up, we get the AI signal here with the potential for an opening range break of one hour, one, two, three, four. So AI spits it out right before the opening range break. So I'm always of the mindset, okay, we're getting a signal here and then we might have a secondary pattern unfold on top of this. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened uh, shortly after the AI signal at 33.98. We bolster on up to this level right here. Let's see, the high of that wick was 34.07. So in the same 15 minute candle, we get that penetration through the opening range, um, which is also a very good sign. So we got statistical probability. We've got a secondary pattern that might unfold, which ended up coming to fruition. And a lot of the times we can also have massive volume accompanying that today. Uh, typically when that's the case, call it a three star trade. The volume was not present in this one today. So we can call this one a two star trade. We got the statistical probability with the potential of the secondary pattern unfolding, which it did, but just not volume uh, in accordance with what I would call high. So nothing to write home about as far as volume goes, but two very positive factors involved with this trade. Um, and that is really about it for Holly today because these are the only two signals in play. Some people out there might be thinking, well, why was the AI so, you know, so conservative today with its amount of signals. And of course, I don't know this for certain, but when you have action like this, it doesn't give anything time to set up. So if I drag the strategy panel over for, uh, from today, you can see that the AI came to the party with plenty of strategies, all right? Take this out of the equation, take today out of the equation. We've got nice, solid movement here, okay? Could have easily been the inverse and headed higher today, but was not the case. If we would have maintained this more orderly type of transition, we probably would have seen a lot more signals being generated today. But when we have action like this off of the open for the opening two and a half, two hours and 45 minutes, well then a lot of these strategies are not going to meet the requirements because each and every one of these strategies is of complex uh, collection of filters along with a catalyst and it takes some very specific, you know, things to fall in line there. Um, so, as Steve said earlier, we might have a little bit more uh, selling left in us. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, and as well, we'll see what the AI has in store for tomorrow. So, pretty short and sweet with the uh, with the Holly recap. Usually, we've got a lot more signals to talk about, a lot more trades, but not today. Um, just like probably most people were not expecting this. Most people were probably expecting more AI trades today, but due to the nature of the market, uh, well, classic case of you can't always get what you want. All right, so what I've prepared for you guys today, keeping in tune with the flavor of the day is, okay, we had some pretty significant selling today. What did the SPY finish at today as far as relative volume goes? About two. 2.23, the Qs were above two, all the major tracking ETFs finished above two. Now, before I get into this, Steve, do I need to backtrack on any of the questions here before I switch gears? Yeah, Christos uh, was commenting on the ERY trade. Let me just make sure I am reading the question here properly why the AI gave the long signal below the opening range high. Well, the reason that the AI triggered right here, and then you can see the opening range break came shortly after, um, simply because the bear trap, okay, is a very specific strategy. It's not concerned with whether or not the stock has broke its opening range today. This was just a correlation, so to speak, okay? We get the signal here, but with the anticipation, hey, on top of the AI bringing us the signal, 
with statistical probability from the bear trap, which by the way, the bear trap came to the party today after the back testing and optimization, op, optimization was done with 79.2% odds of winning anything that came out of there today. And of course, only one trade hit and one trade worked. That's why we're seeing a win rate of 100% today. The exact opposite for the bull trap because we're looking at conservative profit. Um, one trade, one loser operating in essence at 0% today. problem there just had to get a little bit of water there uh, next question from Rob can we use multi strategy to back test you can back test the individual strategies in a multi strategy window um, but you can't really do a group back test so each and every strategy that resides in a multi strategy window you can access the back tester uh, from that window instead of having to use an individual alert window Somebody was asking how you could get a copy of the up today top list you have there on your screen. Good question. Good question. Because what we're going to talk about next are, well, the the three windows that uh, we're going to create some price alerts from today, one of which is the up today top list. So I will be sharing that one along with two other windows. So don't worry. You'll have the cloud links before the webinar is done here. So. You know, just looking at the action today, all right, I'm going the simple route, okay? I'm going the simpletons route, okay? I'm going, you know, my theory here is let's identify strong stocks, stocks that, that did not go with the market today because if they're strong in today's environment and they're looking pretty good on the charts, well, then they're probably going to be worth keeping tabs on moving forward. So that is one of the lists that we're going to look at today, the up today top list. We're also going to be taking a look at one of Steve's creations, the A table, because those are technically strong stocks with a little bit of fundamental seasoning mixed into them as well. Um, and then we'll even have one from my new all time high uh, ticker as well. So keep in mind, all of these windows are readily available to you guys from the Vault, Traders Vault channel. I know that the A table and this Turbo Up Family No Resistance are in there. This little guy's not going to be anywhere because I just created this one today. Um, and when I show you the configuration, you're going to be like, ah, it's so simple, but it's very effective. In other words, it's very easy to find stocks that were up today against the market. And I didn't include the gap. Okay. I'm not talking about close uh, from the last trading session. I'm talking about stocks that were up from the open today. So without further ado, let's just take a peek here. Let me get my price alerts because as I create these price alerts, not only will I share these windows with you guys at the end of the session, um, but I'm going to drop the price alerts in there, give you guys some nice price alerts to start the year with as well. So let's get on with it. I tell you what, let's go ahead. We only had a couple that stuck out to me after I created the up to date top list. So let's look at those first. So first and foremost, let's just look at the simple configuration that makes up this top list. Now, some of these filters are going to look familiar because they're in just about everything that, that I build and a lot of the people here at Trade Ideas as well. Um, earnings per share, we don't really care how profitable or how much money the company is losing. We're just throwing earnings per share in there saying, hey, the company either has to make or lose something. Um, that way we automatically weed out ETFs and iShares since they do not report earnings, all right? Especially for you new people out there. This is a little workaround. It's a way to use the earnings per share filter for something um, other than what it was originally designed for. Uh, before we figured out this little gimmick, we had to constantly go to the symbol list. Notice I can just leave it on all symbols. I don't have to create an ETF list and go exclude the list and continuously update the list in case anybody was wondering what that's for. Uh, pretty generic here on the min max, stocks between five and 150. Relative volumes in there, just with a little bit of oomph, not one, but 1.1, telling us that, hey, the stocks have to be doing just a teeny bit above average relative volume. Uh, so that's what the 1.1 setting is. And then from the change from the open, I just started out very small. Hey, it's got to be up something, in this case, a tenth of a percent. And then we can sort by the ones that are up the most. 
I uh, just threw some generic volume requirements in there as well to try to avoid the super thin stuff. So in the three month, we're looking at 350,000. And then just for my own benefit, I'm like, also let's let's focus in on things that are in the you know the upper end of their 20 day range, up in the 80th percentile, showing us that they do have some shorter term strength over the past 20 trading days. So short and sweet, simple with the filter set here. And this is what the list looked like at the close here. All right. So the two that I kind of saw earlier, and they should still be on here, WSC. All right. So now let's take a look at the daily chart. And we can see WSC has been grinding along and uh, looks like it's still doing the same. Now, I've also been going back and zooming out, taking a look at the weekly as well. I'm more partial to things that are grinding towards all-time highs, which even looking at the weekly here, uh, WSC still looks pretty promising as the 10 period is in control. But we're gonna go back to the daily for now and just set some price alerts here. Now, what I'm focusing on right here is we did breach above this little area and it looks like we closed right at it. As we can see from the, uh, 15 minute today would be open at 23.38 and we closed at 23.40. So up a whopping two cents. You know, if this one would have closed up here, I'd be like, yeah, the train's left the station. Um, but look where we went and look where we closed right at that level right there. So definitely going to keep my eyes on WSC moving forward. I wouldn't say that maybe the high today, let's see, where do we top out? 25.05. That might be a little, uh, we might be a little waiting a little late for that. I'd probably just pick something around here, around the 2376 level to let us know, yes, it is back in play and it could go from here. So that's what we're gonna do right here is just set an alert for, I tell you what, we're gonna go 2369 actually. Not too far, but far enough. And I'm gonna say up today, top list if it rises to that price we're going to go long okay set price alert number one all right no trigger after market that's a good sign uh next from this list prmw all right we've got more of the same action <clears throat> not really getting too far above there um let's see what the close was on that candle right there 1616 where'd we close today 16.35 and pretty much closed right at the high. So, you know, once again, not too far above this level, slightly above it. So we're just gonna set if the close today or the high was on this one, 16.36. Assuming we don't have too big of a gap up tomorrow, I'd say somewhere between 16.46 and 16.50. So we'll just set 16.46 on this one. And up today as well. All right, so we got two price alerts set from this little guy right here. Now, these are the, just two of the ones that on a longer term scale uh, caught my eye. However, that does not mean that I found all the good ones here. Just kind of clicking through because some new ones showed up towards the close. Um, but notice I've installed the position and lifetime range column. All right, so when I look at CWEN, CWEN right here and I see a full green cylinder, that means it actually cracked a new all-time high today. But because the market conditions, I can only assume they're not getting too far past it, which still presents good uh, entry opportunity because we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. We might gap up, we might gap down. Obviously, if we gap way up, you know, the train has left the station. But example, CWEN right now, that one looks pretty good. It looks like it hasn't even popped through, but we can tell that it has when we zoom out and look at the highs and lows. So CWEN could even be another good uh, play tomorrow uh, as it's cracking all time highs. You know, even better if we did get a little gap down and then a retracement up to these levels, it could be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and include this one as well. What do we get the close there? Where my metrics disappeared? What do we got there? Hive 3350. So 
go ahead and set 3361 on this guy, just overshooting it barely. All right, so we're going to take three from that guy. And before, as I do these, I'm going to go ahead and drop this guy into the chat. That way I don't have to scramble at the end and mess something up. Let's see. Okay, up today, top list. Okay, so now that guy is present. And now we're going to take a look at some of the ones coming from Steve's creation, um, the A table. So here we go with the A table. First on the list from earlier, PGNY. And real quickly, a word about what is the A table. All right, the A table is focusing primarily on the score rating right here, which is a proprietary filter that we created quite some time ago. Not only looking at technical uh, aspects of the chart, and as I uh, squish up the PGNY daily chart here, you can see we're starting to coil up up right here. Let's just take a little peek at the weekly, just to verify without me having to sc scroll back too far there. Yes, indeed, we are just teetering uh, at all-time highs. Going back to the daily here. Nice little consolidation. 10 period is, seems to be in control here, and we're just a hop, skip, and a jump away from all time highs here at 44.22. So we're going to set the price alert here, 44.23. Let me just verify that one more time. Yeah. I don't think that's right. 44.22. Yeah, I guess it is. Just wanted to make sure, 44.23 then. And this one is coming from the A table. The price rises. Okay, now we got that one set. So once again, 10 periods in control. I like that wick action every time it goes down there and test it. At the same time, we're consolidating on the daily as well as the weekly, and we're just a hop, skip, and a jump away from that all-time high. So very nice pattern. And the other caveat about the score filter, it's not just looking at fundamentals, it's, or excuse me, uh, technical aspects, but it's also folding some fundamental uh, properties in there as well. Mm. Mike, I see your, your, uh, your comment there about bingo. And I just have to pull this one up because this is every trader's dream. Uh, trying to, you know, trying to get a stock that's been beaten down and, you know, it's, it was so beat down, I can't even see all of the action on the daily here, but it was way below a buck, all right, and it got a little bit of a start here, one, two, three, four days, but then the past three trading days and today being the biggest one, I mean, this thing just going Richter from less than a dollar, what do we top out today at 7.24? Um, so, yeah, huge action on Bingo today. And I do recall Barry, I'm going to say Barry was talking similar action in CHEK today, them having to refile something for compliance on the NASDAQ, which was, I think, the same thing with uh, the Bingo uh, issue as well. But don't have all the details on there. But, yeah, some of these smaller stocks just doing crazy, crazy things today. Okay, before I lose my train of thought here, PG and Y, next on the list from the A table, Suave. You know, Steve, I don't know why my chart got so whacked out here. I guess it's because of my relative strength that I added down here. I'm not going to bother with trying to remove it right now. That's it. You just want to remove the RSI. It, it makes it like that. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, Interesting that, uh, you know, of course, Michael Noss has been pounding the table on relative strength, so I decided to add mine as well. Uh, we can see relative strength backing off a little bit, but may mean something, might not mean anything. Uh, look at the nice formation that we have up here. Very similar to what we just saw in PG and Y. On the daily, the 10 period uh, seems to be in control as well. Let's verify, let's just zoom out, take a quick uh, peek at the weekly. Yep, that is approaching all-time highs. We got a nice consolidation on the weekly with the 10 period in control. 
and then when we pop back over to the daily we got the same thing okay so we see the same thing happening on two time frames that's a good thing ladies and gentlemen so high on this one is going to be 105.09 so we'll just set it at 105 and 10 a table why is it called the a table because the scoring system just like in high school 90s were a's 80s were b's 70s were c's so you will notice that most of these are in the 90th percentile okay so we got pg and y we got suave we next have eli where are you hiding eli It might have dropped off because one filter wasn't met, but we're still going to mark it up unless it just took a header. Okay. Don't know exactly why Eli dropped off the list, but that is the nature of the top list. If any of these filters aren't met, which this one's got a small collection of filters, so I'm trying to figure out which one might have waned a little bit. Maybe the short float dropped a little bit. Maybe the stock composite rating. But last I remember, it was in the 90s. And we can see more of the same here, okay? We closed right at that 10 period today. A little, uh, little cross there. A little doji-ish type, type of pattern here. Let's zoom out just to kind of clarify. But as we can see here, Eli pecking at those all-time highs way back from way back here. So I like the action still, a little bit extended uh, away from the 10 period on the weekly, but nice and tight on the daily. So I still like Eli. Callaway Golf, I remember when they came public back in the olden times. So we're gonna use here, it's gonna be 2536. So we're gonna use 2537. Long from the A table. I think Callaway went public back in the early 90s. That was also when Cobra went public back in the John Daly era. All right, so one, two. Okay, we got Eli on there and AXNX. We can see it's still right here with its 90 score. Not quite as pretty as far as the tightness of the consolidation, but I like how it reacted today off of the 10 period. Took a nice little wick down. We can see these prior days, uh, 10 periods still acting as that guiding hand here, a little swoosh down today. So not quite as tight as the other ones, but still uh, worth mentioning here. What do we got for a high here? 50, this one's gonna be a little bit further away. Um, so as far as a trigger on this one goes, I'd hate, to, I'd hate to miss all this action from here. So we're gonna use high of the day today as the trigger for this one. Uh, which would be 50 and 96. All right, so now we've got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven price alerts. Give me a second. I'm going to create the cloud link. And we'll drop those right in here. Price alerts. Okay, now that guy is in there as well. Uh, so I've got the up today. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the A table cloud link in there as well, just so you guys don't have to go hunting for it. So ladies and gentlemen, it might be a new year, but as far as market indicators go, studies, favorite indicators, it's the same old song and dance, right? We did get a little bit of uh, unexpected action today, or maybe some of you did expect it. I know I was caught a little bit off guard by it, um, but kind of getting back to what I was just saying there. New year, but it's the same old market indicators, it's the same old studies, same old song and dance. Um, along those lines here, let's see, SPSC was the one I wanted to show you from this one today. Um, 
check out the daily here. I do believe we are also at all time highs, but I always just like to verify here. Take a peek at the weekly. Yep. Stocks had a nice little run. And when we look at the daily, looks like it might be in for some more. Notice how it's reacting around the 10 period. This one did get above today, but just like some of the other ones that we looked at, um, not too far above. So we'll take that as a potential entry at the high, which would be 112.33, not too far away from where we closed today. So we'll use a penny above the high, 112.34. And this one is from the turbo up, no resistance. I mean, technically, well, on this one, yes, we are in blue sky because when we look to the left, we don't see anything. Some of the other ones were just below it. All right, if it rises, that's what we want. 112.34. All right, now we got that one as well. Uh, I will also, Throw the clav link for this one in there too. Turbo up, no resist. All right, so nice and simple, ladies and gentlemen. Um, simplicity is often the ultimate sophistication, uh, whether it's trading or any other aspect of life. So this is just a real simple approach. Let's find the stocks today that were strong, if they're still technically sound, which most of these are, uh, as we can just see from the charts that we went over. And, you know, if it's an up day tomorrow, well, we could only assume that they're going to be strong in an up market. And if they're, you know, if tomorrow is another down day or maybe we get a little bit of selling, like Steve said, and uh, you know, regaining of some of these uh, major moving averages or, you know, just a little shoring up of the market. Today's market. We can only expect them to be strong moving forward. Of course, there are no guarantees, but I think everybody gets what I'm saying here. All right, let me just make sure I got all the links in there. I got the price alerts, got all the windows, and I do believe that's about it for the content today, and we're just perfectly timed here, approaching the top of the hour here. Let me see if there's any questions I need to go back and look at here. All right. Ellen is already see. in the FLGT. I thought she was talking about uh, that from another uh, AI alert, but I guess it was from one of the other scans we have. Great, good to know, Thing. I'm glad it's working for you. Yeah, let's just take a peek here. I, I remember seeing that symbol earlier today. I just can't recall where I saw it. But obviously in the genetics, you know, which uh, biotechs are not gonna lose their zest anytime soon. Um, not with the current environment of things out there. All right. Dave, not sure your last drop was price list. Was it a multi-window? Um, the last one I dropped was the Turbo Breaks Up No Resistance, which had the SPSC in there. And one of the links were price alerts. So three windows and one link for price alerts. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, great crowd in here today. I was kind of uh, I was kind of taken aback at the amount of people here. So uh, glad to have you all here. We really appreciate you taking the time to come and hear what we have to say in these webinars. Um, so hopefully you guys will get some good use out of those price alerts and those windows for tomorrow. Um, Scott, if you're ready to walk us out, let everybody know how they can save a little bit of money on a new sub or an upgrade. I guess it's about that time. Yeah, it sounds great. Uh, a couple things to check out in addition to that uh, tradeideas.com slash live daily support session. Do get our earnings ebook during earnings season. It's very, very valuable uh, knowledge. It's got some strategies you can use to apply to your earnings season. Just go to trade-ideas.com slash earnings. There's also some cloud links in there for you to download. We've got a podcast. Uh, why don't you go ahead and subscribe? We've got some great interviews last year, so check out the archives. Just search for Trade Ideas Podcast wherever you listen to your pods. Add us as a subscription. Check out the back issues. And we will be releasing new ones. So as soon as we release a new one this year, the first one, it will pop into your feed if you are subscribed. So don't miss out. Uh, we got a code, Holly New Year. 
save you 15% off any upgrade from standard to premium or new subscription to trade ideas. So if you're not yet a subscriber or if you're itching to get those extra features that premium subscriptions provide, go ahead and grab that and use it. Uh, you can find Jamie on Twitter at Quantbot. Steve Gomez is at Today Trader. Also find at Trade Ideas. Trade Ideas Pro is the Facebook handle and info at trade-ideas.com is the help desk email goes into our help desk software so it doesn't get lost and it gets routed to the appropriate team member. So anytime you have any kind of question, just shoot it there. Thanks, Jamie and Steve. We're going to get this recording up later on tonight or tomorrow and you get an email reminder tomorrow with the links to the playlist where you can find it. So thanks all. Have a good one. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Steve. Thanks everybody for showing up and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.